Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, this I'm familiar with. Okay, let's go along again. We'll go along. I'll play your game. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Fine, I'll go up. Oh my god, this is royal looking. Oh, boss! I have to say, I think this room might be a mite bit too tall. Just saying. I think it's too tall. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. No, no, of course, I don't know it. And because Stanley didn't know this, he never entered the number. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Exactly. To think that Stanley would do that would be absurd. He simply sat around. He couldn't have possibly known the combination. 2845. I'm sorry, what? What did, what did you say? I didn't quite catch that. This room is awfully big, isn't it? Man. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself, and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. Or you could do that. What if I enter it anyway? Okay, it does nothing. Hold on, is there something back here? No, I'm just in a dark corner. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Did I? Because there's something here labeled Escape. Mind Control Facility or Escape. Mind Control Facility or Escape! Although this passageway had the word Escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. I don't believe you. I don't believe a word you say. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity nope. to turn around and get back on track. Nope, nope, nope. 
Nope, nope, and At more this nope. Point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward mm -hmm. and willingly confront his death. I'm not going to die. Don't be silly. Okay, this isn't As good. the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. And so he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow Oh life. no. Oh no. Oh no, I am going to get smashed. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Or did I? And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Good question. Also, what the hell is this? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? I... I don't actually. I don't understand what you mean by that. This is the game level. This is a miniature of the game level. The beginning one. That's where I started. Nature paintings. <laughs> This is where they took- this is like a collection of all the elements, all the assets that they used. All the designs. Stanley's computer. It's like a museum piece. Office layout. This blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development through the core lay- uh, though the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. Hmm, yeah, that's fascinating. Corridor. The pacing of this opening section was important to get right. This corridor has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time. The two doors. The set of two door of two open doors was the very first concrete piece of the Stanley Parable's design. Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it, an exploration of the contradiction of the uh, the contradiction this room posed. And here, here we have some office doors. Button sounds. A selection of the sounds used throughout the game when buttons are pressed. Each sound is a mix of keyboard stroke and a synthesized tone. Hmm. Ooh, filing cabinets. Filing cabinets. Nice. Office computers. Solitaire. Employee database. What's that say? I can't really read it. Too small. What the hell is that? Program. That's a little bit too small for me to read. Oh, here's the credits. And I believe these are the actual credits. Yeah, the, those are the creators. Mm-hmm. I think so.
Made using Source by Valve. Hmm. Two doors. The office. Maintenance room, an early version of the maintenance room. I never went there, actually. I know how to get there, but I never went there. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll explore that. Hmm, hold on, what's this way? Boss's office. Screens from the development... Uh, God, I can't even talk. Screens from the development of the boss's office. Ooh, those are some very different designs. Alright, so that one was a basic nondescript office. Looks like it's made out of development textures, just like that one room back there. A while ago. This one kind of is, and this one is just... Not at all. This one's very... Royal looking, and expensive. Office clock. Fascinating. It even works. Amazing. Freedom ending. This is the very first incarnation of the freedom ending in the game's alpha. Oh, apparently that's an ending. Countdown desk. One of the desks from an early version of the countdown ending. Ooh, can I press it? Come on, come back up. Or don't. Freedom. This is the freedom ending as it existed in beta. Ooh, it's back. Ah. Oh. Monitor room elevator. For a time, the elevator in the monitor room could go up or down, with freedom above and countdown below. We abandoned this when players found it too difficult to remember what was up and what was down, and placed the two endings together instead. Oh. Okay. I vaguely remember that. From the mod, I think. I think that was in the mod? Countdown room, an early version of the countdown room. Which I have not experienced any of those endings yet. Oh my god, there's a lot here. That's not where I came in, is it? No. Alright, let's keep exploring. Zending. This screenshot depicts an early version of the ending known as the Zending, which was eventually cut and merged with another part of the game. Oh, what the hell that is. Zending levers. These levers were originally a part of the Zending. The player would pull a lever and the narrator would describe what color lever what cover lever they had pulled. Zending model. The Zending went through many iterations. This room represents the fourth version of the ending, and we thought it was complete. But decided to abandon and change it again shortly before launch. The game is now paused. Begin the game again, resume the game, options, return to menu. Escape menu. For a long time, we had an ending that only ended when the player restarted from the escape menu. Unfortunately, very few players realized this was what they were supposed to do, which was frustrating for everyone. <laughs> huh. What the heck is this? Trailers. We ran four major teaser trailers over the course of the game's development, each meant to convey something about the spirit of the game. This is the first one released in May 2012. It features a series of broken rooms and the voice of the narrator informing viewers that he's preparing a new version of the Stanley Parable. I wish it had sound. Yeah, without sound, I just have no idea what's going on. Okay. Something ticking over there. Meeting room projector. Maintenance layout. The flow of hallways following the first two doors was important to get right, since players will replay them so many times. We discussed a number of designs, but ultimately it was the simplest version that won out. Hmm. The apartment timer. 
In a previous version of the choice leading to the apartment ending, a timer would give you 15 seconds to pick up the phone. Not picking up the phone would lead to a different ending. Huh. Cargo lift. Cargo lift was always intended to offer the choice of staying on or jumping to a different path. However, after this early version, we decided we also wanted the option of the player falling to their death. Which I experienced, yes. <laughs> the cargo lift. Second version is functionally the same as what's in the final game, but we wanted it to look more like a place where cargo was actually stored. I agree, that is definitely a good idea, because as it is now, in the, I mean, in this picture it does not at all look like a place where actual cargo was stored. It looks like some weird science facility. It's got the weird design from like Half-Life 1. Where you have these massive, like you're in like a, like a base of some sort, a research base, Black Mesa, and you have these gigantic rooms with indeterminate purposes that just look strange and alien, like it's empty or it's just full of random stuff, and that looks like one of those, which is not a good thing. It's like, oh look, this room is like 50 million miles, it measures 50 million miles by 50 million miles, and it moves these gigantic boxes. And that's it. That's the room. Like, what? Seriously, some bizarre level design in Half-Life 1. The lounge. An early version of the lounge. Hm. Looks similar to what it is now, except not as good. Oh dear god, where have I been and where have I not been? This is confusing. Narrator emails. After the second trailer we sent, uh, we sent out, we asked people to email the narrator for questions. While we had initially planned it to use these in further promotional materials, we never found the perfect use for them. Here are a selection of those emails. From James. Subject, love the game. Greetings, omnipotent voice. I wanted to tell you I liked the Stanley Parable as much as I liked seeing a humorously... What? Okay, fine. Disappear. Thank you. From Like Harris. Subject, question. Hi, Mr. Narrator Guy. I have a question for you, sir. And it is, what is your... Seriously? What the fuck? From Michael M. Subject, some questions. How do you make a JRPG? How do you make the worst game ever? What is the difference between a duck? What? What is the difference between a duck? The difference between a duck and a what? Okay, oh my god. Can I read this? Um, From Wang Yang. Subject, urgent response needed. Please, I would like you to keep this proposal as a top secret and delete it if you are not interested and get back to me if you are interested for de mm. From Quickstar. Subject, question. Will the game feature capybaras? Or however you pronounce that? What? Okay, come on. Next one, come up. I'm gonna read it. From Marius. Subject, a question brought forth by the intense passion of my soul. Am I Stanley? Are you spying on me? I don't... Why? How? <laughs> what? <sighs> From Dink Dunk. Subject, gay. Are you gay? <laughs> that was an actual email? What? From Otto Tempio. Tempio. Subject, question. Are you a rock? Fascinating. From Forrest Gainus, subject, dear, dear Narrator. Dear Narrator, will the Stanley Parable have infinite quests? How many endings? If the Stanley Parable is really going to let me go shopping, I hope it will have a fine selection of desert boots. From Sergei Medvek... Medvek... Medvedko? Subject, asking the Narrator. Well, the thing I want to know is, who... Uh, what would you do if Stanley entered any other rooms? From James Irvine, how is the games? How is the game... How is the game going? I hope it's as good or better than the first one. From a cool man. Okay, I'm gonna leave before these drive me crazy. <laughs> they're even behind glass. They're behind glass. Like, they're literally like museum pieces. Stanley's office. From left to right, the evolution of Stanley's office over time. The first was created in, no in November 2011, the second in March 2012, and the third in February 2013. Okay, so like a year between each one. Wait, are you serious? They're like... They're like basically the same. I mean, okay. This one looks super awkward because you have that desk that's kind of in the middle of the room. And the filing cabinet back there is just kind of like shut back there. Like something about this doesn't look good. Because of the desk. I feel like the desk should be in a corner or something. Here it is. Looks... Better, you still kind of have that off, uh, awkward filing cabinet, and there's more stuff on the desk as well, and the desk is bigger. This one looks better, you still kind of have an awkward filing cabinet, but 
There's more movement. It looks like these filing cabinets have been opened, and once again, there's more stuff. Okay, I guess it is a bit different. It just... It's not a huge difference. Game design mock-up. This is the level that William, the level designer, sent Davy, the writer, as a kind of audition piece. The strength of this level got William hired to design the full game. Though much of the environment has changed, the basic layout from this mock-up is still in the game. Hmm. Okay, I'm sure there's a couple areas I haven't missed, but I think it's time to move on. A lot of this stuff doesn't even make sense because I haven't experienced the endings yet, so we'll see. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. The Stanley Parable. On. Off. Goodbye. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time choose Oops, I let time choose for me. <laughs> darkness. Nothing but darkness? I'm dead. I let time choose for me. And now I'm dead. Begin the game again. Okay, let's take the elevator. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Wow, I just realized the game is very... It keeps track of, I guess, how many times you've played, because now it's like skipping the first section, because it knows that I'm just going to be making the choices that actually change what happens, so it's kind of skipped me through that section. Very clever. Okay, I'm gonna go through the wrong door. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Okay, this time I'm going to go into here. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. But I'm going to go here. Stanley didn't want to go back to the office. He wanted to wander about and get even further off track. So now, in order to get back, he needed to go um uh from here. It's um left. Okay, I'll go left. Oh, no. No, it's to the right. My mistake. Mm-hmm. No, Fuck no, you. no, no, not the right. Why would I have ever said it was to the right? What was I thinking? It's clearly... Oh, dear, would you hold on for a minute, please? Now, let's see. We went down right, left, down, left, right. Yep, yeah, yep, okay, okay, yes. I've got it now. This story is absolutely, definitely, this way. Okay, thank you. No, 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 this isn't right at all. You're not supposed to be here yet. This is all a spoiler. Quick, Stanley, close your eyes. Okay, 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 we just, we just have to get back to, um, oh. Who am I kidding? It's all rubbish now. 
the whole story completely unusable. How about rather than waste my time trying to salvage this nonsense, we'll just restart the game from the beginning. And this time, suppose we don't wander so far off track, hmm? Okay, from the top. Okay, let's try that again. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Now, what can I do differently? Wait, wait, what? No, I'm, no, I restarted. I swear, I definitely restarted the game over, completely fresh. Everything should be... Oh, did something change? Stanley, did you change anything when we were back in that room with all the monitors? Did you move the story somewhere, or... Uh, hold on. Why am I asking you? I'm the one who wrote the story. It was right here just a minute ago. I know for sure that it's here somewhere. Okay, then. It's an adventure. Come, Stanley. Let's find the story. Ooh. Well, I guess it's not through there. <laughs> because it's blocked by chairs. Hmm. Okay. Let's go here. Inner guilt. Everyone knows what you did. They're just holding back to let you torture yourself. Indeed. I'll say Indeed. It. This is the worst adventure I've ever been on. I can promise you there definitely was a story here before. Do we just. Do we need to restart the game again? Well, I find it unlikely that we'll ever progress by starting over and over again, but it's got to be better than this. Okay, let's give it a shot. Why not? No, 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 no. Ah! All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Um. Okay, yep, it's worse. I might be remembering this wrong. It's possible the story is back where we just came from. Why don't we go back the other direction and see if we missed anything? You... You want me to go backwards? Okay. Aha! I knew we'd miss something. The story. Here it comes. No, wait. Never mind. Not the story. Okay, let's head back the other way and retrace our steps. Okay, okay. God, get your shit together, narrator. Now this... Well, I'll be honest, I don't recognize this place at all. Is this the story? I don't think so. I can't quite recall, but I believe my story took place in an office building. It, is that correct? Hmm. Do you remember, Stanley? Or do you know what? Since I've completely forgotten what we were supposed to be doing, how about this? You win! Congratulations! Yeah! I know you put in a lot of hard work, and it really paid off, so good job. Oh no. No, I don't feel right about this at all. We both know you didn't put in any actual work for that win. Some people win fair and square, and this was not one of those situations. Okay, I'm getting weirded out by whatever this place is. I don't care what might happen this time, I have to restart. Okay, from the top. What the hell? All right, <laughs> I've got a solution. This time, to make sure we don't get lost, I've employed the help of the Stanley Parable Adventure Line. Just follow the line. How simple is that? Okay, thank you. I was scared by so much freedom. Tell me exactly what to do. You see? The line knows where the story is. It's over in this direction. Onward, Stanley, to destiny. Though, here's a thought. Wouldn't wherever we end up be our destination, even if there's no story there? Or, to put it another way, is the story of no destination still a story? 
simply by the act of moving forward, are we implying a journey such that a destination is inevitably conjured into being via the very manifestation of the nature of life itself? Okay, Stanley, I need to follow this train of thought for a minute. Just stick with me. Now, we can both agree that the nature of existence is, in fact, a byproduct of one subjective experience of that existence, right? Agreed. Okay. Now, if my experience of your existence rests inside of your subjective experience of this office, is this office, in fact, the skeleton of my own relative experiential mental subjective construct? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. That got a bit weird back there. Well, I'd like to apologize. Not sure where I was going with all that. You know what? I think what we need right now is a bit of music to lighten the mood. <laughs> Wait, what the hell? Look at look at this. I don't even know. Wait, cut the music. Go back and look at that fern. What? Where? This? Stanley, this fern will be very important later in the story. Make sure you study it closely and remember it carefully. You won't want to miss anything. Oh. Okay. Hold hold on. Let me um let me collect some evidence here. There we go. I will never forget it. I have a picture of it. Wait, what? We're back at the office? No, no, no. Line, you do know we're looking for the Stanley Parable, right? The story? Is any of this ringing a bell? Ah, I think your Stanley Parable Adventure line is faulty. Come on. What the hell? Oh, no, 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 not again. Line, how could you have done this to us? And after we trusted you, after everything we've been through, you... Well, I can't take this anymore to hell with it. Restart. From the top. Did you fix the line this time? You know what, Stanley? I say forget the adventure line. What's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, right? Why can't we make up our own story? Mm, Something yeah. exciting, daring, mysterious. Ooh. Ooh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in, well, I don't know. How about this direction? Sounds as good as any direction to me. Let's go. Now. Yes, this is exciting. Just me and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? Go wild. Use your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley, I'm ready for it. Oh, no, not you again. Mm. Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it, and we should be fine. Come on, come on, something new, Stanley. Is this really all you can imagine? Okay, it's gone into the ceiling. Goodbye. Something new. Okay, okay. Ah, a choice. We get to make a decision. From here, the story is in our control. How important we mustn't squander the opportunity. In fact, I believe I need a minute to think here. 
Just walk in circles for a minute. Okay, so I know that each door has to lead somewhere, which means that somewhere at the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door that leads here. And that, in turn, means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? And since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Another victory for logic. Come, Stanley. Our destiny awaits. Okay, thank you. The confusion ending. Oh, hold up, what's this? Hmm. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is? It's all one giant ending? And we're supposed to restart the game eight, eight times? That's really how all this goes? It's all determined? So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this, this thing, wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really? No, it can't be. I, I don't want it to be. I, I don't want the game to keep restarting. I, I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. I won't restart the game. I won't. Do it, I won't do it, I won't do it. And the time return stopped? Does that mean, um, did we do it? Did we break the cycle? The, um, whatever it is that made this schedule? How would we even know? Will someone come for us? Will something happen? So, okay. <sighs> I guess now we just wait, you know. I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story, wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey, though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination, so I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Eventually. Well, in the meantime... <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? Well, okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. What can I do now? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Hmm. Hmm. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping he'd coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Ooh, executive bathroom. That sounds more exciting than the boss's office, doesn't it? Yes, yes. To be rich? Is it a crime? To commit crimes? Isn't it rich? What a life it would be to have to pick just one. Extreme bathrooms! Ooh, I love that magazine. It's my favorite. The hell is wrong with that mirror? You can't even see yourself in it. What's the point of a mirror that doesn't reflect? Truly a thing to ponder. Is that a painting of someone with a gun to the head of a panda? <laughs> Business strategy. Holding a gun to the head of a panda. Goodbye, boss. Wait a minute, what's that? What does that say? I am the most expensive boss. Well, congratulations for you. Do I actually get to choose which direction I want to go? Um, okay, up.
Hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Did that just take me nowhere? What the f- Go up. I demand it! Dun 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 Bum 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 Ah ha 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 Ugh. Okay, fine, take me down. No, go down. Down. Do 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 do. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, I'm getting the impression this elevator is broken. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. Indeed. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. Oh, did I? Ah. Hmm. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. I do feel relaxed and rejuvenated. I feel good. I'm not even sure what to do next. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Never mind, I do. This time I'm not going to escape. This place doesn't seem ominous at all. No! Surely this huge button with the picture of a light bulb on it will not open up, like, turn on the lights or anything. No. What's on that paper? Just a bunch of numbers. Here we go. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Okay, that obviously activates cameras. What the heck are these things? Are they computers? They kind of look like miniature microwaves. Hmm. All right, that one says employee observation protocol. Okay, so they're obviously they've obviously been observing all the employees. Now the monitors jump to life. Their true nature. Oh, revealed. I was up there before. Each bore the Look at number that. of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. 
the lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Hmm. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Yes. Yes, I will. Somehow. Mind control status offline. What the hell do these buttons do? Absolutely nothing. Well, I guess we can just turn off the facility power. That would probably work. Or wait a minute. There's a huge red button. Wait a minute. Ooh. Maybe, instead of wrecking it all, I could use it for my own purposes. Mind control idle, awaiting input. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Hmm. Hmm. Screw it. I pretty much always do the opposite of what the narrator says the first time he says it. Nope. I'm turning it on. Oh, Stanley. You didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley. I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, oh, no. nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. 
Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shit. It to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you. Re-enter passcode. About me. What's the where passcode? 0521, well, 0521. I'm seeing that a lot. Know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are. Wait a, a minute. A of solace oh. before you're obliterated. Bastard. All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. Zero five I'll two tell one. You exactly what happened to them. What's up? I erased them. I turned off the Four. machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Where the hell is the zero? Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. This is not good. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds. <laughs> Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going? Or Press any key to send power search. Doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it on? I mean, running that does nothing. button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these Man, colored one. buttons, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you say that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea? You have two attempts remaining. <laughs> <laughs> Stanley, you're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. <laughs> to see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world. Console disabled. Enable fine. backup power to activate. But I'm going ah. to destroy it first, so you can't. Goodbye, employee 427. Take a look at the clock, Stan. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending. Just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life? Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to all right, me. All right, I'm going peacefully. Joke. And believe me, I will be seconds. laughing at every second of your inevitable life. Fuck you. From the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. Let's try that again, shall we? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. <laughs> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Hoping he might come into a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, Dark blah, blah. The keypad. Thank you. Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh, hey, look, it's a new passageway. Kill surprise. Thank you for saving me the time. Much appreciated. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The 
lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold, Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. No, it For won't. He Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes! He had won! He had defeated the machine! Unshackled himself from someone else's command! Freedom was mere moments away! And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him, for it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Beautiful. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Achievement unlocked. Beat the game. So yeah, I remember that ending from the demo. I guess that's probably the most straightforward and basic ending you can get in the game. It's basically the ending where you do every single thing the narrator tells you to do. At this point, I'm not sure what else I can get. Like, I know there must be more endings, but I don't know how to get them. Where can I Stanley diverge? Stanley knew the office layout like the back of his hand. It was only a matter of time before he found the others, wherever they were. Just a matter of time. And the game changes often when you restart. As you just heard, that was different. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What should I do? I don't know. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, 
just to admire it. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first time, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope. Ooh, that's one place I haven't been. I never went across the, uh, the, the thing. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. The cargo lift, yeah. I fell to my death, and I went over there, but I never went up there. Off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. And who is she? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. I don't want to. Let me out. As Stanley took the phone, <laughs> a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, I but with hope. It. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? Mm -hmm. No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices, and to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Very well. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. <laughs> or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer <laughs> radius of his house. Which choice would you make? <laughs> Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. <laughs> Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Pr practice? Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially <laughs> insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. 
you may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Okay. I swear I will make the correct decision this time. Wait, where am I going? Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. Indeed, we indeed. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Oh, I see. They've even put a safety guard around this whole thing so I can't kill myself. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, Stanley would go right. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction, perhaps we're not too late. Oh no. Reality is distorting around me. Okay. Stanley would go right. Damn it. Okay, I have to go left. Oh, it's ruined. You I can't believe after everything we talked about that you my story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage, it... Well, it's worthless now! And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you you're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. Behave exactly as Stanley would. 
That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay, I think it's broken even further. I'm gonna go to the right again. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry is behave exactly as Stanley <laughs> would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. And back to the right we go. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. Is behave exactly okay, as Stanley okay. would. To the left. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I can't even go downstairs now. <laughs> Wait, this used to be the bathroom. Now it doesn't say that. It's locked. Is taking control. It's not allowing me to go off off the rails anymore. Whoa, this is different. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. I... I can't speak. I can't speak! I can't talk! <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver, right there on the wall. Uh, uh, uh. You didn't write sorry, in the story the ability code? for me to speak. You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, <laughs> he entered the door on the left. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? 
Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Danny, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Okay. How many endings are there in this game? I have no idea. There's probably a bunch more. But I am going to stop here. The thing is, I'm worried that if I keep trying to find endings, what's going to happen is eventually, I will inevitably, I think, hit a point where I can't find any more and I start getting some of the same endings. As soon as you start doing that, you start kind of like breaking down the game and kind of harming the experience because then you start getting like annoyed and you feel like your time's being wasted and you're not sure whether there's going to be an interesting outcome as you're playing through it and then it kind of turns into like a slog. You're just like getting through the game as fast as possible to try to get to a different ending. I don't want it to get to that point. I feel like I've experienced enough of the game. And at this point, I don't know exactly what I could do to change the ending. I mean, I guess one thing I could do is go back to the phone, but this time actually answer it. Instead of unplugging it. But honestly, I don't even remember how I got to the phone. So I don't know if I could recreate it. Yeah. So, I'm going to stop here. I'm sure there's a bunch of different endings. But this will be the end of my playthrough, I think, of the Stanley Parable. Okay, so, my thoughts. The wrap-up. Now, I always uh, start with the bad, the things I didn't like, so that I can end with the good. However, in this case, there's really nothing I can think of to that I didn't like in the game. There's nothing I can think of to criticize, basically. Uh, I mean, no, not even that. No, th I mean, <laughs> I can't think of anything. I literally can't think of a single thing. That is a very good sign. <laughs> now, the good. This game is ridiculously clever. As I said before, it's, before I started, it's very meta. It breaks the fourth wall a lot. It is very conscious of how games are designed. And it's... It's kind of a game about games. A game about game design. About how players play within a game world about interaction. It's about a bunch of different things. How a game tells you what to do, but often players do something different and the game has to adapt, or not. Sometimes it doesn't adapt and it just breaks down, as you saw many times. Sometimes it does adapt, but then it has to keep adapting and adapting and adapting, and at some point it can become too... twisted and it just doesn't work anymore. There's a lot in the Stanley Parable. It is an incredibly multi-layered, deep, and dense game. I don't even know where to start to do like, I don't know, a proper examination of the, the themes and the ideas brought up in it. I couldn't even start. That would require a bunch of research and preparation. So I will just say it is incredibly clever, incredibly fun, insightful, mind-blowing, just awesome. It's so damn good. I think that's about it. It's just really, really good. It's one of the most intelligent games I've ever played. I feel like I'm selling it short by not saying more, but... I can't think of what else to say. Okay, well, I guess that will end it. So, I hope everyone enjoyed my playthrough of The Stanley Parable.